G'day boys and girls, Kupala here. Apologies for the delay. I've uh, had a rather busy couple of months, which I'll address in an update video I'll, that I'll have out shortly. In the meantime, I thought I'd do a very quick tutorial showing something very easy that a lot of people don't realize is easy. And it, it is, it's stupidly easy. Um, and I'm going to show you how to do it, and it's not going to take long, promise. Uh, and that's a mini-map. We're going to do a mini-map, or at least some sort of a mapping system for your game. So what you're looking at at the moment is a little, I don't know, demo thing that I use. I've been using it to create a little character controller and just test a couple of things. But I thought it would be perfect for this. So don't worry too much about what's on screen. What I want to show you is the method, how to create the map. Let's just imagine that this is an awesome, incredible game. Something, you know, that you've been working on for a while. You've got everything in there that you want. You just want a, a map that the player can look at. Some sort of point to sort of reference where where they are in the world so they don't get lost. I'll quickly show you how this works at the moment. There's nothing fancy to it. It's it's just a a little capsule controller that moves around with a with some sort of weird mustache on his on his face there. Yeah, it's cool looking. Uh, and he just he just moves around. So you know it's not fantastic. Like I said, it was just for testing. I'm not covering how this guy moves around. I'm not covering any of this stuff. All, all I'm showing you this for is so you can sort of see what the world looks like and, and what to expect. So we're going to build a map to go over the top of this. And it should be pretty easy and it should be the kind of thing that you can adapt to your game very easily as well. And it doesn't even really involve any scripting at all. We can do all this just from within the editor. And the good thing is you can apply this to 2D very easily as well. So I'll show you the method first of all. So there's probably two different ways that most games will handle their maps. Uh, the first one is the sort a traditional little mini map that you might have in the bottom corner or the top corner or wherever and this might be just a little a little version of the game that sort of sits in the bottom corner now previously in unity this used to be a little bit difficult to the best of my understanding i, I think this used to be a pro feature only definitely not the case now you can do this really easily and what we're going to do is set up a second camera and that second camera is going to be what we use to get our map so we ideally in this context, I'm going to set the camera up to be quite far above the player, looking down on them, so I'll do that now. I'm going to go to my player object that I have here, the little capsule. I'm going to just add a camera to it. And once again, you can do this however you like. This is just to sort of show you the method, but uh, we are going to use a second camera, so I'm going to call that one Map Cam, or Map Camera, how about that? Sounds a bit better. So we have a camera here. Uh, at the moment, we can see in the camera preview that... Uh, it's just sort of looking forward from the player. If we look down in the game window here, we can see that we can't actually see that camera. All we're seeing is still the original one, the one I had set up in the first place. So we need to sort of adjust that and uh, work out a way to view this and, and see where we want it to be. So if we go to our main camera and have a look at that, I've got a depth value set here of 1. And the depth value works as sort of the, the order in layer, the drawing order for the cameras. So if I go to the map camera, Currently that's set to zero, so a lower number will be drawn underneath a higher number. So what we want to do is set this to a higher number than the other camera, so that it's drawn on top of the one that we can see now. So to do that, I'll just set it to a number higher than the other one, which is the other one is one, so I'll set it to two. And we can see straight away by doing that down in the game window that we can now see from the second camera, the map camera. So I'm going to make this a bit easier to distinguish. Like I said, let's put it so it's it's childed to the player object. The player object is the parent, so it should follow the location of the uh, of the player, nice and easy. I'm going to increase its Y position. We'll just set it to I don't know 15, something nice and high above the player, and we'll set the rotation to 90 on the X axis, so it's looking down on the player. Now, if we have a quick look at the camera preview here, we can see in the game window we still have it all all in perspective. I think for the purposes of this map, I'm going to set it to orthographic, just so it sort of flattens it all out and looks a bit more like an actual map. We can also adjust the size. I might just increase that. Uh, 10. Uh, 10's a bit big. I might set it to 7. We'll set it to 7. There we go. And so at the moment, we can see we've already got a very basic sort of map starting to happen here. We can see that we're looking down on the player. Ideally, this camera will follow the player around, so we're always going to be looking down on them like this. At the moment, the camera itself is obscuring the entire main camera, so all we can see is the map. We want to adjust this. 
So if we go to the map camera, we'll just have a look at the viewport rect down here, and we'll notice we have two different sort of value, or two different uh, vector twos, I guess. Uh, I'm not quite sure what the term is there. But we have a width, a height, and an X and a Y position. So these sort of do what they'd suggest. If we adjust the width of the camera, say make it half its current value, 0 0.5, and do the same for the height value, we can see already the two cameras are sitting one on top of the other and the second camera, the map camera, which is half of the size of the other one, has shrunken it, shrunk itself down to the bottom left corner. Uh, I'm just going to get rid of that error, don't worry about that. That's sort of happening because I'm playing with the values. Um, Alright, so we have it down there. Let's make it a little bit smaller. Let's say we'll make it 0 0.25, so in theory a quarter. So it's down there now, a tiny little version of itself, and we'll probably want it to sit a little bit out from the side, I'd say. So I'll just set this to 0 0.01 on the X, and same for the Y. We just want it to sit a tiny little bit out, just because it looks a bit tidier. Uh, if I run the game now, we should see that camera, the minimap sitting down there. Um, it is rotating with the camera, uh, rotating with the player, sorry. You could probably prevent that if you wanted to. But you can see the workings of a very basic sort of minimap happening there. It's following the player around, and we have an overhead view of all the different objects. And that's cool. That looks pretty cool. You know, it's very basic. Um, one thing that's sort of a bit different to your traditional sort of minimaps, I guess, is that the maps usually wouldn't be an exact replica of what you're seeing on the other camera. I mean, it works, it's fine, but it's sort of, you might want it to look a little bit different. So you might be thinking, all right, well, what, what's an easy way to achieve that? So I have a few things in this world already, namely a bunch of cubes. These are sort of the obstacles that the player walks around. We can see them all there. What I might do, um, if I come down to the project here, I'm going to add a new material, and we'll call it map object material, something like that, or I'll just call it map object, it's a material, we don't need to call it a material. I'm going to drop the smoothness of that material just so it's flat, uh, I don't really want it to be shiny. And I'll just change the color, I'll make it, I don't know, red, red's good. There we go. So it's just a very basic material. I'm going to grab these cubes here, I'm going to duplicate them, so we have exact replicas in the exact same positions of every single cube. And I'm going to set the material of those cubes to be that new red material. Alright, cool. So we now have a bunch of red cubes. I'm going to use these in the map only. And the way we're going to do that is by creating a new layer. Which we'll call a map layer. Sounds good. And we'll go to the main camera and we're going to adjust the culling mask of that camera. And we're going to tell it... So this is the main camera, the main one that the player is looking at in the game. We're going to tell it not to see the map layer. We don't want it to draw any of the objects that are sitting on that layer. So I'll turn that off. If we come back to those five cubes we created, we're going to put them all on that map layer. And there we go. They've disappeared from the main view. So you can see in the main camera, we can't see them. In the minimap camera, we can. And we'll just sort of adjust a few things as well. If we go to the map camera, and we'll do similar. We're going to set the culling mask to be only the map layer. So we'll set that to nothing, and then just select map layer. Oops, not UI. There we go. <laughs> Helps when I get that right. And you can sort of see that again. So it's not drawing the floor at the moment. I haven't got that happening. Um, I can probably, I'll just do the same. I'll just duplicate the floor. And I'll just set the second one to be map layer. So it's drawing it there. It's got some shadows. You can get rid of those. Just turn off receive shadows on that one. Because we don't need to see them. A map wouldn't have shadows. Unless you want them. I don't know. Maybe you do. Up to you. One other thing we're going to do as well. Let's just go back to that map camera. And we're going to take the audio listener off it. We don't need that camera to be receiving any audio. So we'll just take that off. That'll stop that little error from popping up too. So it won't, won't break the game, but you might as well get rid of it. Cool. So you can sort of see there, once again, the very basic workings of a minimap. 
it's nothing particularly special, uh, but it's the method that sort of matters. And like I said, it, it is really easy, and people don't think it's that easy. And I, and I think it might be a leftover from the old... Like, it used to be a lot harder. I'm not 100% sure on that. Someone might need to fact-check me. But like I said, I, I think it used to be a lot harder to do these picture-in-picture -picture sort of effects. Uh, whereas now it's definitely not. That's, that's really easy to do. Um, we can also see, you can't see the player at the moment on the minimap. That's also really easy to fix. If we just go to the player, we'll just add a 3D object. Uh, how about a, what am I looking for, a sphere? Just zoom in on that. I'll just raise that up a bit. Where's that material? Let's say map object. Let's say map object player. And I'll just, I'll make that green or something to represent the player. And where is it? Sphere. I'll just, I don't know, we'll call it player, map player, marker, something like that. I think you get where I'm going with this. Just make that one green. So yeah, once again, you can see it there, but we'll just change its layer, so put it on the map layer. Um, and there you go, you've got a little marker in the map as well. I mean, you can see all this in the editor, you can change all that. And that's sort of a bit nicer. Um, you could zoom that map in and out, you can treat that camera just like any other camera in the game. So you can do exactly the same things. You don't even have to have it following the player like this. You could have it split up, have it all separate. And that sort of leads on to something else I was going to show. I've written a really quick little script here, just to sort of play around with the cameras a bit so I can sort of show you if you want to do any cutting or or changing between the cameras it's as easy as just disabling the camera and re-enabling another one so I've got a very basic simple script here all we're going to do is have two camera objects assigned I've got a ball here and I've got a ball as well to control the different types of map uh, I'll show you that one in a second and all that's going to happen is when I press the M key the letter M it's just going to make a couple of changes to the maps. So there's two options. One is it's just going to disable and re-enable the map, the little mini map in the corner. The other one is, and I'll show you to set this, I'll set this up in a, in a second. Uh, I'm just going to show you how you could swap between two cameras. And once again, that's just, all we're doing is toggling a ball and based on the status of that ball or the value of it, sorry, we'll just update the two cameras. And it's as simple as just disabling one and re-enabling the other. And I'll just change that around. I usually like to set the first camera as inactive before setting the next one as active. I don't know if it makes a difference. It's just a uh, force of habit. But I'll go to that. Uh, just drag the map control onto just that little script. Just drag it onto the player. And I'll just assign those two cameras. Say so map camera and the main camera. Where is it? There it is. So at the moment, I've just got it set up as a little on-screen minimap. So I'm just going to set that ball to true, just to sort of say, yep, that's the way I want to control it. And I'll just run it. If we press the M key, it should just turn it off and on. So there you go. You can see it's really easy. <laughs> There's not a lot to it. Uh, and I'll just show you the other method as well. So I was sort of saying another style of that map might be if we go to the map camera. I'm just going to set that to be the same size. So we'll set it to 1 and 1. So it's now drawing across the whole screen. And I think, how have I got the script set up? So, yep, it assumes that the map's open when we start the game. So I'll just, I'll go with that. I'll just hit play. And if I press the, whoops, I need to change that ball first. I'll do that. Go back to the player. Turn that ball off, play, and if I press M now, it should just swap between the two. Uh, there's some graphical weirdness there. I think that's my Unity. I might no, it's not. I've forgotten to change the camera back. Hang on, we want to set that back to zero, just so it's centered. I'll try that again, and go. So there we go. <laughs> Map off, main camera. Press M key, map is back on. Um, we can sort of, you know, there's still lighting affecting everything in here and all of that. Once again, you can change all that. It's not hard. Um, the important thing is just to sort of show the method. And there you go. So I hope that helped you guys. Once again, 
it should be fairly easy to adapt that to your own games if you do get stuck if you're having any trouble jump in the discord let me know you can send me an email the emails in the about section uh, you can yeah jump in discord have a chat to us there's a few guys in there that can help you out if I'm not around uh, or just leave us a comment and I'll try and help you out as soon as possible been a bit busy lately guys but uh, I do try and keep an eye on things as best I can so once again please like please subscribe thanks for watching guys and I'll see you next time